Each party has 15 minutes to present oral argument. The appellant proceeds first, and you may reserve up to five minutes for rebuttal. So if there's some things that you would like to uh, say in response to what uh, the bank's attorney might uh, uh, say, then you need to let me know on the front end, and I will stop you when you get to that point so that you can save some time. Right. Okay. All right. We've read the briefs and we're ready uh, to proceed uh, at this point. It's uh, it's turned out to be quite a catastrophic issue for me here. Um, I'm sorry. I'm going through a lot of my personal life right now. Um, pretty much, I just try to I try to ask my bank what happened with my account. How is this my fault? I would just like some details here before I fork over some money to you. Since then, I've, I think I gave them a couple extra hundred bucks while I'm in the trial court. Um, it's some pretty serious issues while I was in the trial court. I'm not sure if you've reviewed the affidavit of prejudice that was filed. Um, that was informed, I was instructed to write to the Supreme Court because the Bar Association that I spoke with, they said that doesn't seem right. Just because the judge recused himself, that shouldn't go away. The bank's pretty much avoided answering every single aspect of the case here. I still don't know how this is my fault here. I received a receipt from the bank. I knew that regardless if I went to an ATM afterwards, I could withdraw the maximum daily amount. I'd still have a couple thousand dollars laying in the account. So I Went ahead and did this. I got a printout for my receipt. I knew how much my balance was. I checked on my phone. We do live in electronic era. I've submitted quite a few things here. Once again, my apologies on its format. I think that I probably could have did quite a bit better. But more teaching is definitely needed there. Mr. Schaefer, can I ask you a question? Absolutely. I'm, I'm unclear as to exactly what transpired with the bank and how. It, it appears at some point you ended up owing the bank some money. And can you explain to me how it is that the bank says you owe them money? Why that's, do you owe them money? That's what I was trying to figure out for the past three years. Did you over, was it a checking account? It wasn't overdraft. Did you overdraft the checking account? Supposedly. Okay, did you get statements from the bank, either I, electronically or, I mean, on your phone when you went in electronically, or did you get them in the mail? Or? After X amount of time went by, and they just kept spinning me off from employee to employee. Eventually, I figured, you know what, I need to start making sure this is documented somehow. So I went to their security message center, and then I started getting documented messages. I submitted the one and, and with the complaint, and they clearly say, well, we're sorry, the check was just delayed posting for three days. I'm trying to figure out how is this possible. I walked into the bank. Did you write checks to no. them? You never wrote I mean, a this check? This was the first check that I wrote off the account. Like, okay, I okay. walked into the bank. Did your do you pay your bills through your checking account? No, this one was a personal account. I have a brokerage account that I paid bills from mm -hmm. with Ameriprise. Um, but I walked into the bank. I wrote a thousand dollar account check to myself. They printed, scanned it, processed it, so they were good. Paid me. I walked out of the bank, went back to work, continued about my day. Next day, um, same thing. Repeat all over again. Didn't go into a bank. I used an ATM. My balance was steadily decreasing with purchase. And next thing I know, three days later, my account just pops a thousand dollars plus into the red. I instantaneously call my bank, asking, "Hey, what's going on here?" Um, say, "Oh, well, we're sorry, sir. You know, your account was overdrafted." I said, "Thanks. You know, I kind of noticed that. Can you tell me how this happened? Like, what's going on here?" I ended up on hold for about two hours. Didn't really get any kind of response from the bank other than, well, it's the late posting for three days. Um, I believe I got, um, sir, don't worry about that. That's not your concern. Let's focus on getting this paid. I told them, I'm not going to do a damn thing until you tell me what's going on with my account. They started telling me, well, if you're not going to pay this, we're going to send this off to collections. I told them, no, you're not. You're going to tell me what's going on with my account. Excuse me, I, I'm a little confused. You wrote, you, you don't deny writing the checks, correct? correct. 
uh, you just say that their math is wrong, that somehow their computers have not given you credit for a check that was deposited that would have prevented your status as default? More so, eventually it came out to me that the bank did not process the check when they told me to. And they just decided, okay, we're going to push it through three days later. You mean the day that you went in and wrote the counter check, mm -hmm. they did not process, process that. Correct. They gave you the cash, didn't process correct. it. You checked online. This, as I understand, this happened on a Friday. Yes. Okay. So you checked online over the weekend, and because they had not processed it, your balance appeared to have a thousand dollars more than it actually had. Supposedly, yes. Okay. There was still a couple thousand extra in the account, so I kind of lost track there. But my balance steadily decreased as I made purchases, go get gas, and sure. cigarettes. The number kept dropping, so I thought, oh, well, all right, my life is constantly on the go right now. Or anywhere from 12 to 18 hour days. But the worst part about this is that when this happens here, the bank decides to tell me, okay, well, you don't need to worry about anything. Just pay us this money. I'm trying to figure out how am I going to recant my Mother's Day gifts, and you're not going to tell me what's going on with my own account here? You're going to make me look like the biggest ass in the world here. And I can't well, even get a reason I just why. want you to remember where you are. So just try to... My apologies, Your Honor, but okay. it's definitely a super personal matter to me here. I've tried to collect everything that I can here. You can see just from the messages alone that I've provided from the bank, they aren't telling me anything about my account. I contacted the collection agency. I informed them, hey, you want to dispute this directly with Huntington here? They told me, okay, well, we need to receive some kind of paperwork from Huntington in order to prevent this. I, I wasn't sure how that was working here. I started reviewing some of the information, and I think the applicable code was 15 U.S.C. 1681 S-2, and Huntington's duties as a furnisher of credit information. Speaking of which, they pulled it from my report, they published it to my report multiple times, plummeting my score from a 764 into God only knows, it's embarrassing. I've lost my ability, I could walk into any place in the entire country, get whatever I wanted with the best rates of interest. That's like a dream now. And my apologies, last time I saw your honor, I was wearing a suit, but they pretty much belong in their sleeves now. You've been before this court? Yes. Before? Oh, okay. I believe that was yourself. Miss um, Carr? On this case? Mm -hmm. Oh, was it scheduled in Akron? No, was it was it here? here? Oh, okay. All right. Very That's well. A year and a half or something. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else you care to add? I don't know, I think I've put it on the front of the court here. Very well. Well, if you would uh, take a seat at this table and we'll uh, hear from the counsel for Huntington, and then you'll have a few minutes to respond. Good morning, may it please the court. My name is Doug Epler, the attorney for Huntington, the defendant below and the appellee. Um, Huntington respectfully requests that the court affirm the trial court's September 28, 2015 order, which is the appeal order here. Uh, there were three aspects to the appeal order. First, the trial court denied the appellant's motion to reopen discovery. Second, the trial court denied the appellant's motion to dismiss Huntington's compulsory counterclaim. And third, the trial court granted summary judgment in favor of Huntington. Um, so what I'd like to do with my time, if it pleases the court, in addition, of course, to answering and addressing any questions that you have, is 
give just a very brief overview of the facts, uh, a brief overview of a prior appeal in this case, and then give my arguments for why each of the three aspects of the appeal order were appropriate and should be affirmed. Um, so first, the, the facts of this case are, the material facts of this case are simple, undisputed, and straightforward. And um, to your question, Judge Whitmore, there's no issue about the math here. Uh, on May 10th, 2013, the appellant wrote cash, received the proceeds of a $1,000 counter check against his Huntington checking account. The $1,000 transaction, the debit of his account, was not reflected on his online account information until Monday, the following Monday, May 13th, the next banking day. Um, appellant proceeded to overdraw his checking account by more than $1,000, $1,008, uh, and he refuses to repay Huntington the balance, the overdraft balance. That's really it. I mean, those are the facts. Those are, you know, that's the basis for this lawsuit. Um, May I just ask a question, um, you know, for those of us who do um, online banking, um, typically withdrawals uh, are reflected um, on days other than days that the bank is open. So is it somewhat unusual for that not to have been uh, posted? Right. Well, what happened, the in, what happened in this case, and uh, there was an affidavit filed uh, to this effect but from a Huntington officer, but, but what happened in this case... And it's in the record before us? Yes. The affidavit? Yes, okay. Go ahead. Uh, it was, it was a, in support of Huntington's motion for summary judgment. Um, and so the, the, what happened in this case is the signature, Mr. Schaefer's signature, obscured um, one of the numbers uh, that was part of the account number on the check. And so initially, somewhere in Huntington's system, the check was, even though he got the proceeds, the check was rejected and the matter wasn't addressed until the next banking day on, on Monday. I, I, I remember reading that. Um, yeah, so that was, that was what happened in this case, but you know, keep in mind the overdraft transactions, uh, May 11th and 12th were like the next day. Um, so I think the timing is somewhat important. Um, but with respect to the prior appeal, uh, does that address your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. With respect to the prior appeal, um, the trial court granted Huntington's first motion for summary judgment in March of 2014. Uh, the, this court reversed that order and remanded the action, um, but it's important to keep in mind that the, the, the reversal was based solely on a procedural issue. It, it wasn't a finding of the court that there were any genuine issues of material fact. What happened was, uh, while Huntington's motion for summary judgment was pending, the appellant filed an amended, was granted leave to file and filed an amended complaint. Huntington answered the amended complaint and uh, re-raised its motion for summary judgment as to the amended complaint and a reply brief. What Huntington didn't do was file a new motion for summary judgment, a separate motion uh, specifically as to the amended complaint. And so what this court said was, uh, it was this court's holding that, 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 that would, there really was no motion pending when the summary judgment was granted and therefore it was an improper sui sponte rule. And so now we're, we were remanded, we filed another, Huntington filed another motion for summary judgment that was granted and we're back. Um, but I think just the important point there is this court never found that there were genuine issues of material fact. It was purely procedural. Um, and the procedural deficiency has been addressed. Uh, so going to the, the legal issues, uh, first with respect to the denial of the appellant's motion to reopen discovery. Um, first, the uh, important point here is that we're under an abuse of discretion standard on this issue. So um, 
the, the court really can only or should only reverse the trial court and find something in the nature of a perversity of will or a defiance of judgment. Um, that's not present in this case. Um, and in fact, as is addressed in our brief, there's the trial court was actually required to deny the appellant's motion to reopen discovery because he failed to comply with Rule 56 F. Uh, there was a motion for summary judgment. Huntington had a motion for summary judgment pending uh, when the appellant moved to reopen discovery. And as such, he was required to submit an affidavit explaining why he needed additional time uh, to respond to the motion for summary judgment. And he failed to do that. And the consequences of that are clear and they're twofold. First, the trial court properly denied the motion to reopen discovery. And second, the issue is not preserved for appeal. Um, it's not properly before this court whether or not uh, the trial court should have granted his motion to reopen discovery. Um, and beyond the Rule 56 uh, aspect of it, the, the trial court's decision not to reopen discovery was entirely reasonable. Um, as is reflected by a court order in the record, Mr. Schaefer, the appellant, agreed that discovery was going to be closed um, at a case management conference that occurred uh, May 29, 2015, after the case was remanded. Um, and what, what that order reflects is that the appellant wanted to file a third amended complaint to raise some legal issues um, and some additional legal claims that he felt applied. Um, but since the case had been remanded on a procedural issue, and since there's no material issues of fact in this case, it was determined that discovery would be closed. He would be allowed to amend his complaint, but discovery would be closed. Um, and so it made perfect sense for discovery to be closed. It made perfect sense for the trial court to refuse to reopen it after Mr. Schaefer had made this, this deal. Um, and so, you know, the, the denial of the motion to reopen discovery, it's, it's entirely reasonable. In fact, it's, it was required. Um, and, and there should not be any reversal on those grounds. Um, so moving to the denial of the appellant's motion to dismiss. Um, uh, uh, granting appellant's motion to dismiss, as I'm sure you know, would only be proper if Huntington had alleged no set of facts uh, entitling it to relief. Um, they clearly have. Uh, the bank clearly has alleged a set of facts entitling it to relief. They allege the overdraft balance failure and refusal to pay. In fact, that's not in dispute. Um, so I don't think there's any reasonable question that Huntington stated a claim for relief. Uh, and finally, the grant of Huntington's motion for summary judgment. Um, as I've mentioned a few times, there's no disputed material facts. Um, now, Huntington's motion for summary judgment in its brief um, kind of goes one by one and deals with all the issues. I don't think that would be a good use of the court's time to go through all that now, but um, suffice it to say, Huntington's met its initial summary judgment burden. Um, the appellant, on the other hand, has not met its reciprocal burden under Civil Rule 56E. Uh, there's no admissible evidence supporting any of his claims in the record. There's uh, really no logical connection between any of what he even alleges and any of his legal claims. Um, and so summary judgment is proper. Um, and so, in light of the foregoing, in light of everything in our brief, we respectfully request that the appeal order uh, be affirmed. Uh, just as a procedural matter, um, I didn't recall until Mr. Uh, Schaefer raised the issue that he had been before this court uh, previously. And then, you know, if, as you argued the case and as I reflected back on the brief, it came back to me. I don't know whether we ever um, suggested, and what, were you counsel for the last uh, oral argument? No, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Uh, Bales, Mr. Bales, Steve Bales. I okay. wonder whether or not um, the bank um, might have considered uh, mediation of this. It just seems like, you know, you've got a customer who, for whatever reason, legal issues aside, really feels um, discounted 
right. and whether or not um, or sometimes mediation can address those issues outside of the confines of you know just the law. Right. So I, I'm not pushing that by any means. I, I'm just suggesting that it is there as a tool, and it'll be probably a you know month or so, maybe two before anything is released on this case. I just suggest that the door is open right. um, during that time to see whether or not these issues have been resolved. Particularly since it seems like a lot of time and energy has been invested over um, you know this issue. So yeah, just, no, absolutely. And I, I, I mean, I can address that a little bit. I haven't been directly involved in most of the settlement discussions, but I can tell you that they haven't been productive um, in light of. In light of the appellant's demands, uh, the, the amount of money that he's, even in the context of settlement, it, it hasn't been uh, something that's been, something that's worked. Well, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Schaefer, um, you will have a couple minutes to um, wrap up. If you wish to uh, respond to anything that you heard in uh, uh, Mr. Epler's uh, argument. This is your opportunity. Um, the first issue with discovery was, um, I'm not sure where he was really coming at the issue from, but when I asked for discovery, Judge Ewers pulled me to his chambers and told me, I'm not going to give you discovery. I don't want to give you discovery. I don't feel like there should be any more discovery. Were there any others in chambers when you had that? Oh, yeah, he was sitting there laughing with Mr. Bales the whole time. I had my phone recorder on. That's what I submitted to the Supreme Court. But in lieu of Judge Ewers even answering the affidavit of prejudice, he just recused himself. Then they dismissed the matter as moot. The Bar Association told me I should send a letter out, which I did, asking him to reinvestigate that because that was a clear violation of the judicial canons as well. He ultimately told me, if I want a final amended complaint, there won't be any discovery. And if I don't want to take that, he's not going to give me anything at all. Meaning that was, anything regarding He said that he was just going to shut the entire case down, right then and there. So pretty much, the, we all need to understand that was definitely coerced there. I wanted to proceed, but I was definitely informed that if I continue to press the matter, it would end very badly. And do you know whether or not there was a um, transcript? You have indicated that you had um, you took your phone in and you were recording some of what happened. But uh, was there a transcript of any formal proceedings on the record? Or uh, I am not sure. Okay. I know that I was out in the hallway for about forty-four minutes, I believe, while Mr. Bales was back there talking with the magistrate, I believe. Um, yeah, this it, there was some seriously fishy stuff that I encountered along this entire three-year bout with Huntington. A lot of things don't add up. And, and what did you do with the recording from your phone? I put it on a flash drive, and I was waiting to ship it off to the Supreme Court, but the judge didn't even respond, and they just said, okay, it's dismissed as moot. I was waiting to go down there just so I could hit play right in front of everybody. I'm pretty sure Mr. Bales would have got his license to practice stripped from him. Judge yours as well. He clearly says on there, I don't care what the law says. I'm going to do what I want. I knew that I was facing an uphill battle. I did not know it was going to be like this, though. That's for the discovery. Summary judgment? Let me ask a question. Is it possible that this is a lot more simple than you're making it out to be? Very much. I okay, think so So you wrote the check on Friday. Mm -hmm. When you signed it, it obscured some of the numbers, so the bank couldn't scan it through. This is what they're, this is what they're saying. So the bank couldn't scan it, ran on through the machine, got kicked out because it couldn't decipher what your account number was. There was nobody in the bank over the weekend or whatever to process it, so it didn't get done until Monday. So you're checking your account over the weekend and you don't see the $1,000 comes out, so you keep spending money because you thought you had $1,000 in there that you didn't. But you didn't see the $1,000 didn't come out, right? No. 
you didn't see that the thousand dollars was deducted. Because no, if I, you're looking electronically at your transactions, you'd have seen, oh, there went the thousand dollars on Friday. Now I know what I got. I checked that in the morning. I was using ATM receipts throughout the day. But you. That doesn't stuff give you an itemized printout. Right? No, I mean. When I check in the morning, you have a big block of numbers and big um, 24 print. Okay, but so on Friday, so hypothetically on Friday, you had a $2,000 balance. Saturday morning, you still had the $2,000 balance because I never took the $1,000 out. So you should have known I that the thousand bucks that, was still there. It, there, was, there was probably like four or five grand in the account, so it, that was a little, that's what made well, it Well, that's a, a significant amount, money. though. I mean, $1,000 more, $1,000 less, and it's something you've noticed Not from day to day. Not a number, because... Well, you can definitely agree or disagree on that one, but, but again, yeah, but I, I guess what you're asking though is, it, sounds, it seems to me like what you're asking is for a Huntington Bank to give you a pass and say, well, we didn't process it until Monday, so we're just going to give you $1,000 worth of free stuff you bought over the weekend, because we didn't get to it till Monday. Right. We wouldn't even be here if they had simply told me what was going on with my account. It the, sounds like they did. They didn't process it till Monday. Oh, no, no, no. I was asking them. What happened? It took me three months to find out that the check was delayed posting for three days. But whatever, whatever the date was on that message that I submitted with the complaint, that's when I found out that the check had been delayed posting. Other than that, all prior to, it was just, oh, your account's have been overdrafted. You need to get this paid. I said, no, you need to tell me what's going on here first. But you knew you had written the $1,000 check. And I had asked, what happened here? Because they accepted it. They, I wrote the check or filled it, signed it. They scanned it into the system, processed it into the computer, then they paid it. So, but, whole, but you're saying that for three months, you the the thousand dollars never showed up on on your statements. No, there was a there was no nothing about it until just you, oh you have a thousand dollar transaction here that's unaccounted for. But it wasn't within the next, you know, couple business days. I don't like Monday think that Tuesday. was. At this point, I'm pretty sure. I, that's why I've been pressing this so hard because it didn't add up to me. Did you ever get bank statements from the bank? At some point in time, I got something from their attorneys. But no, I mean, did, but every month there. you get a bank statement. You either get electronically or you get mm -hmm. it in the bank. Yes. Correct. Were you getting them electronically or were you getting them in the mail? I got some electronically, I believe. But you had access to look at those things? Correct. Okay, and, and do, do you recall when you like got your account with the bank that you had to sign something that you agreed to have a contract with the bank for a checking account? Um, I think I did all the clicks on the computer. But I know in, in my own case, if you don't deal with it in 30 days, you're kind of messed up on it. Oh no! I, Thirty days I, of dispute it or else. Oh no no! I I dispute this within right out of the way. Within, right immediately as soon as my account. I woke up, logged into my account, and as soon as I saw those numbers red instead of black, I instantaneously called them. Hey, what the hell is going on here? And of course, they give me the runaround for God knows how long here. Um, last time we were present, just it was just me here. They waived their argument last time. You have an opportunity with your account. To print copies of checks that had cleared. Honestly, I'm not sure. I really didn't write checks from this account. They just said, "Oh, this is past the ATM limit, so you have to go in." So you you never draw out of that account by check. You just yeah. it, electronically it's taken out. But my question still stands: Do you have the opportunity to see the electronic record in detail at any time? Yeah, there's, that's how it's supposed to go. This one just never appeared. And I was so caught up with everything. The holiday, Mother's Day was two days later. So it I was didn't so appear, busy it didn't appear yeah. three days later on the Monday. I don't even think it appeared three days later. I think that was it was midweek in there. But additionally, the bank says that, oh, we had to wait till the next business day to process it. The bank's open seven days a week now. Oh, oh, online they are, but not people in no, the bank. The store, yeah. Their bank. And Avon Link right there, it's open seven days a week. Yeah, people in the bank. I think so that I don't know what he's talking about there, but yeah. I think that um, we have exhausted the time that it's left. I, I, I want to always give my colleagues the opportunity to have their questions answered. Thank you for your presentation, uh, Mr.
Mr. Eckler, thank you for your presentation. The court will take the matter under advisement. We'll um, issue a written opinion, which will be sent to both parties. You can check the Supreme Court website uh, in the interim as we post our decisions there. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you very much.